Welcome to Droning with Bob. I've got a, uh, a new project on the bench today. We're going to put together some micros because uh, uh, it's nice to fly indoor in the winter time. Uh, although uh, these mic micros don't have ducks on them or, or prop protectors or whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're doing the, uh, I believe it's the tiny shark or maybe the baby shark uh one of those two from pinion rc um so it's a little 95 millimeter frame uh it's so it's 95 by i want to say it's something like 80 this way um i could actually check that uh the uh this is meant for a 16 by 16 stack and I am going to be running some 11,000 kV on it. I'm hoping to do this up as a 2S. It might be a little bit too small for a 2S, um, but I'm hoping it's going to work. Uh, I actually have a 1S build planned as well. Uh, I was going to do a 1, a 2, a 3, and a 4. And if time permits, I'm going to try and do a 4S uh, DJI 2.5 inch. Um, see if I can make that work um yeah so here's what we've got it's uh let's see uh i've got this guy over here it looks like it is about s <laughs> from motor center to motor center it looks like about 60 millimeters and then is that right that could be right can it yeah that's right 60 60 millimeters center to center on those motors and then uh, in length it looks like <laughs> it actually looks like it's closer to 75 center to center so yeah we're going to be running two inch props on this or 1.9s or whatever the the beta fub ones uh, recommend and uh, it's got a little tiny uh a little itty bitty canopy and it's got this guy here uh, which I think is a tray for a camera that sits sits like this actually uh, and the camera sits down in it and I think it will hold a uh, let's see what cameras do I have I have a bunch Let's see if this guy even comes close. Um, this is a, a leftover, it says Venus on the back, but it actually wouldn't fit in another build that I had. And it's not going to fit in this build either. So that's okay. It's actually kind of heavy, although it's got all this stuff attached to it. I do have a Cadex Nano. And this looks like it's going to fit. So if we get that guy down in there like that, maybe put a little hot glue or a little EV6000 on it, it should hold that in there pretty well for what we want to do. At least I hope so, because my stack actually has a uh, a VTX on it. I wonder if I unscrew this slide it over hmm. maybe I should have checked this out you know before anyway we'll play with that or uh, failing that I do have a run cam nano and it's tiny and failing all of that I even have I should probably put this back in the box so that I don't lose it because that's exactly what, I would, what would happen I'd end up losing it. So we got the Cadex EOS 2. That's that guy. Or I have uh, some of these guys here. Um, and these are all in ones. Although this guy looks too big to go in that way. And so does. Well. That one might actually fit, but yeah, I'm not sure. Failing all of that, I do also have um, what 
what else do you got? An Oversky analog camera. I don't know what that means. But it looks like a regular old camera. And I think this one was actually planned for this at one point in time. Believe it or not, this one might be the one to use. Huh. I wonder if I can cut two little slits in this and just kind of slip it on down. I wonder if this little guy will even work. You know what? Let's live dangerously. Let's see if we can make this little guy work and this little guy. <laughs> Play on words, if you will. Yeah, I have lots and lots of parts. So, whatever happens, we can probably make something work. Okay, and then uh, the rest of the stack, let's talk about that. We've got this guy, which is one of the tiniest stacks you can get um, and I am planning on like I said running an XT60 off of it and uh, we're going to um, we're going to power this from a, probably a 300 or 452s um, that's just it, I mean it's not that big and my if you compare the sizes I mean the battery itself is as big as the frame <laughs> so but it does have a couple of little hooks on the inside here so we can get a, a little rubber band to go around and under and hold this guy in place so if not that guy I do also have three hundreds and that actually looks like it might work a little better, um, honestly. So, get a little rubber band on there. Wrap that under. Hold that in place nice and snug. Put a uh, little bit of Uma Grip on there. And that'll hold it. Keep it from slipping around. Alright, let's get started. And uh, I should probably turn on my... <coughs> my soldering iron before we do much more and get this guy pulled apart um, so that we can run run the uh, run the wires and everything the way we want to I'm just gonna do a quick dry fit test, and we'll we'll put a um, put a crossfire on this because I put crossfires on everything, and uh, just based on the size of it, I don't think I can fit an immortal T on it. But you know, hey, maybe. Um, so I'm going to mount this guy. like this with the flight controller in the middle and the screws coming down actually yeah let's do it the way it suggests all right we're gonna bring them up God, that's small. It is like itty bitty, teeny tiny. That's it right there. That that's the whole stack. I, 
It's small, that's for sure. Uh, which one of these is motor one? Um, you know? I'm going out on a limb and guessing motor one is back here. Let's make sure I don't have this flipped around backwards. Nope. Okay. So we're just going to wing it. Get it lined up. Push it together. Like it was. Good God, it's tiny. Alright, I'm pulling it back apart one last time. Okay. Alright. I'm going to say the connector, or the XT60 goes towards the rear. Whether it does or not, we'll find out later on. It doesn't really matter. We'll get it flipped around and switched out because Betaflight doesn't care very much. You can remap pretty much anything you want with resource maps, which is covered in detail by Joshua Bardwell. Check out his channel if you get a chance. I think his stuff is great. You might too. All right. Let's do some soldering. Alright, get you cleaned off there. And we are, again, we're using the surface mount tip. I feel like on this little guy, it's going to be what we want in the end. Um, just because it is, these pads are just ridiculously tiny. Good God. Hang on, people. I need me some blue tack. All right. This stuff comes in hand a lot. And you need to just hold something in place. It's a couple bucks. Pick it up on Amazon. It's fun tack or blue tack or even have white tack. Um, it's meant for like hanging up posters and dorm rooms and stuff like that. But it sticks to just about everything. Comes off pretty easy. If you get it hot, um, it's it, it gets a little stringy. Um, but if you let it cool down and then um, use the the cool stuff you can like dab it and pick it up so kind of fun kind of useful especially for something like this where I just don't want it moving around on me because the tip of my iron is pushing it away and that is causing it to not want to go Oh, come on. Good God. You know, I have a micro uh, magnifying thing over here, but I'm not using it because I want a good picture for the for the viewers. <laughs> of course, I'm not even in the middle of the frame, am I? There we go. That's a little better. But yeah, it's so damn. 
tiny bit. So I'm kind of holding it at, at a little bit of an angle, feeding just enough solder to fill a gap a little bit. It's about as good as it gets, I think. I mean, we're talking itty bitty. Itty bitty. Um, so if this guy is going to hang around like this, and we're going to just bring it up. We don't need all this, do we? Why don't we just do... this much. Oh yeah. That seems like the right amount. To... Although it actually seems like an awful lot in this context because it's... I mean... Very, very tiny. Uh, let's tin this guy. We'll just stick a little. Hold it like that for a second. Get this solder off. Yes, yes. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's see if we can get this negative cable connected. Well, I'm not crazy about that. Not at all.
Okay. That I can live with. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll settle for that. It's not the best in the world, but it's good enough. Good enough for the girls I go out with. All right. Good. Now. Motors. Let's talk motors for a second. We've got these guys here. These are uh, 11,000 kV 1103s. And I am hoping that they're powerful enough to get this thing off the, uh, the ground. Should be. Right? I mean, 11,000 kV sounds like a lot. But the rated 2S. So they should hold up. So, but, yeah, 11,000 kV does seem a little high for 2S. 10,000 kV sounds closer to where I should be, but, and it's got this funky hole pattern. <laughs> Leave it up to Beta FPV, the industry leader, to use a non-standard hole pattern on their motors. Yeah, it's 8.5 millimeters on diameter. Yeah. So, I'm just going to wing it. Hope it fits down in there. It should. And we'll get that connected up and wired in and I think just from looking at it I'm gonna need a couple well, those might go are any of these longer than the others that is a negative Oh, maybe. Are any of these shorter than the others? Doesn't look like it. That's alright. It's just wire. Uh, that might... This one might actually be just about... Long. Okay, well, whatever. <clears throat> we will get it wired in and mounted up. Luckily, the only thing I need to wire up in addition to this is the camera. Well, you gotta be shitting me. It's it's uh Phillips. <laughs> I'll be named. Is that gonna be? Yeah, that won't work. It's like Phillips triple zero or double zero sixty. I don't know. Where uh? Okay. Beta FPV, what in the hell are you doing to me? I'm just going to get one started and then see if we can get the opposite corner started. 
if we can get two of these guys in, I will be very happy. And if we can get all four in, oh shit, <laughs> I'll be even happier. It looks like I'm going to be able to get all four in, which is really surprising since everything I've read online says that the hole pattern is 8.5 millimeter, not 9 millimeter, and that the you may have to file. I was like, oh, no big deal. It's not like I don't have a Dremel. Yeah. All right, one down, three to go. Let's get the uh, the next one on there. Hopefully it goes as smoothly as the others. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I haven't done a lot. I have a HX uh, 100. Uh, that's about the only beta FPV thing I had and they put it out under a weird name hum hum quad I don't know if they bought hum quad or it was just a joint development thing or but basically it's a it's a beta everything about it, it's a beta FPV it was one of the first toothpicks and I I picked it up and oh gosh when did I start doing this uh, June something like that I I'd actually bought a, uh, a bunch of parts um, including a KK2 and uh, um, this is old school stuff I now realize but it was on Amazon and I was like oh I, I don't know shit about shit let me just buy you know this $50 frame that looks like a DJI drone you know and this cheap $50 um transmitter and receiver I think it's micro zone or something like that micro one I, I forget what it was it's down here in my drawer collecting dust um, and uh, then it said oh you need motors and I brought some 2212s uh, for this 10 inch propped uh, thing uh, yeah 10 inch props and uh, so it really is kind of like a DJI clone it's really not terrible um, but I, I haven't done anything with it other than test, basically test hover it. I, I was, I never got a camera on it. The KK2 is not really an FPV thing. It's uh, not, never, was never designed for holding a camera as far as I can tell. It lets you control gimbals and other things like that, but not much else. And it was like conceived in 2012 <laughs> or 2011 so I mean it's it's sufficiently old um, compared to like you know a $40 you know uh, a $40 flight controller from you know get FPV it's a uh, you know a night and day difference uh, you know you put it in angle mode and thing will hover there all day long and uh, um, with the KK2, it's all over the place. It just there's nothing, nothing keeping it in check. Bad gyros and everything else in it. But um, yeah, I bought it on a whim, and I, I said, oh yeah, you know, one of these days I'll I'll finish up. And ever and that that was only in June. So I, I've come a long way in since like June of this year. Um, <laughs> it was June when I bought my 3D printer. It was June when I bought you know a bunch of other stuff and just kind of got into it and thought it'd be fun to sort of explore and then I started watching videos on the internet you know which is usually the way I I find out more information about something and I latched on to Joshua Bardwell and his helpful tips and tricks and how to do stuff you know how to fly better and how to build your quads and everything else and uh, just started getting into it and started buying more and more crap it uh, I bought a bunch of these micros thinking oh yeah you know micros are the way to go they're 
fun and light and fly them around the house and around the yard and you know I really don't fly them around the house because my dog goes ape shit <laughs> so it's kind of one of those things where I was like oh yeah it's a great idea you know nope dogs just, dog freaks out starts barking yapping won't shut up and finally you're just like I'm not gonna fly in the house anymore <laughs> irony that is the definition but uh, all right, we've got our motors wired or uh, fixed to the airframe, if you can call it that. It's just about the smallest thing I've ever put together. And uh, we've got some nuts here. We've got our battery, which is going to mount up underneath, like so, or like so, however we want to do it. Again, it's got these little hooks. <clears throat> on the bottom for you know I can get a rubber band in there after the fact do I even have any rubber bands I don't think I do I'm gonna have to go to the dollar store or something anyway uh, yeah you get your rubber bands in there hook them onto these little nubs and that'll make it so that you can hopefully that's a, in focus or close to in focus um, hook it onto there, slide your pack in, and uh, off you go. And uh, all right, we are down to wiring these up. It wants to reach, and it doesn't. Uh, Somewhere, I have some race wire. Some really itty bitty race wire. But you know what? Down with it. We'll just lengthen them. And we will just cut the connector off of this guy. Like that. And cut the connector off of this guy like this living dangerously and then we'll strip back oh about a millimeter good god it's tiny yeah doesn't take much Okay, Do the same on this side. And then we'll see if we can't. I'm not even going to tin these. I, I think they're just, they're too tiny for tinning. Good lord. One down. Stay in place.
Alrighty. Well, that one's on there. These guys are going to want to be lengthened because they just are not going to reach no matter what. Yep. Which is a shame, but hey, you know, best laid plans. Itty bitty. All right. Might as well get them lengthened. Uh, so we're going to need a little bit of wire, not a lot, just a little. Luckily, don't buy this. Uh, I think right around. An inch should be more than enough for this. Yeah, about the silicon wire before I really understood, you know. Hey, you know, doesn't need to be all that fancy. A fancy old box. Doesn't really gain you anything. All right, should be six there. Looks like six to me. And that's done. And uh, I think what I'll do is I'll tin these guys on both ends. So I'm gonna strip off a bit more than I normally would on one side. Just get a little extra. Because yeah. joining two wires together, it's always a good idea to have a little bit extra. Alright, one side is done. And got that. Okay, we've got one more to do here, and then we'll start tinning these guys. And uh, I'm just going to tin them on this silicon mat because. That seemed to work okay last time.
Yeah. Let's see about this. Hopefully it goes well. And then these last three up here. Okay, that one's done. And I want to clip this guy off. I really just clip my fingernail. Son of a bitch. Never fails. I uh, want to know the true definition of irony. It's uh, attempting to write, it never fails, and writing, I never fails. <laughs> uh, yep, been there, done that. Okay, let me get some shrink tube out of the box. I think we have some ultra tiny thin stuff that will hopefully slip over this green wire. It looks like it. Now we need to do is cut this into halves. Okay. Just slide this guy. And these wires are thin. Yeah, the stack, this little iFlight Success stack, I, uh, I don't think I've used this one before. I used the HGLRC one last time I did a, a micro for my Johnny 2.5 build, which I didn't film. That was before I... I filmed everything, um, but uh, yeah, it turned out all right with that HDLRC, but haven't used this one yet. But I bought three of them to do a bunch of micros. You know what we're going to do?
All right, sorry about that. Had to move those up. Just needed a little bit of finesse. A little closer to my face. <laughs> All right. There's one, two, and three. All right. Let's do So for these guys, I might just wrap them around the inside of this stud. Um, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'll just... shorten them to work. Something. All right. Yeah, just not sure about this one. Ten mm -hmm. these guys a little bit. Slip that on, and finally slip on this guy, and then we'll go ahead and solder on these extensions. All right, and I've got the uh, the iron set to uh, about uh, 425, 800 degrees. A little high for this work, but probably why I'm having so much solder trouble. Probably lower it down a little bit. Good. All right. This thing is super long. I'm going to trim this one. And take a couple millimeters off of that one. There we go. done and last but not least this little guy my technique is basically just to hold them side by side and run the iron up and down and then now it's stuck together and that's it that usually does it it's not I mean it's not a lineman's you know but it you know joint but it's serviceable and if you don't know what alignments joint is look google it it's it's a useful um type of wire junction used by uh, the telephone company and uh, when they uh, do wiring uh they almost never use solder for a variety of reasons um but they need to make sure that the cables don't come apart and so they take the two wires and they um, sort of bring them past each other and then wrap one side over here around and one side over here around and then as you pull them apart again they actually get tighter the joint gets tighter and tighter it's uh, a useful style of uh, wiring it's just not really appropriate for something of this size you know I mean it's not telephony. It doesn't need to be all that important. It's just not 
worth the effort of adding that much weight to something that's already itty bitty to begin with. I can't believe they didn't put longer uh, longer wires on this thing. All I needed was a centimeter more wire. Centimeter. You know, you couldn't have just been like, ah, just tuck it in. And nope. It uh, needed a centimeter more wire, and they didn't give it to me, those bastards. It's all right. Okay, one. Two. Went and saw planes, trains, and automobiles in the theater. Uh, my wife scheduled a date night, and uh, <laughs> one of the props, it was like a prop show, because, I mean, it's a 30-year-old movie. Uh, one of the, prop, the, the props that they gave out were lighters, and mine had a beer bottle cap opener on it. And kept that one and took it home. They also had uh, shower curtains. If you haven't seen the movie, it's 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 a classic. John Hughes. All right. Okay. If I just wire these up and then tape them. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to wire them like they are. Yep. And use a little tape. Because. Yeah. Why not, right? Yep. Once again, back to using this guy. We'll just use a little tape to attach it to the bottom there. Mm -mm. That's not good enough. <clears throat> Busting out magnifying glass. I am just too old to be able to see clear enough to know if I have bridged one of these. Oh. 
Well, you know what? It actually doesn't look too bad. I think we got lucky. And turn it off. And set it back in the corner. Yep. <clears throat> so there it is. There is our wiring. And uh, I'll just I'll fix this down with a little bit of Kapton tape. Something nice and thin. Won't get in the way. And uh, that way it's it's out of the way. Same with I'll probably do the same to the back just to keep it consistent. And uh, all right, we'll keep moving on. Keep on trucking. Now, uh, I probably need to figure out if this little tray goes right here. And holds this guy. Let me just shear off. I mean, would that be wrong to just cut off those little tabs? So I mean, it kind of looks like it'll fit without them. I do have two of these, so if I screw one up, yeah, all right, how are we looking? We're at an hour, yep. Uh, we've been recording solid for one hour. It's probably time to call it at this point. And, uh, but first, let's see if it actually does fit. No, it doesn't. So, that's okay. Because you know what we're going to do? We're going to slide this puppy in at a nice little angle. Lean it back ever so slightly. Yeah. Okay. One side. Let's see how that looks. That looks actually great. Wow. Yeah. All right. One more time. Let's see if we can get this. Second time's a charm here. There's the camera. Now, this guy goes like this over top of the lens. This guy slides down like so. And where does it land? Nobody knows. Okay. It needs to go on the bottom. I think. Yeah. Mm. 
Not a problem. Oh, come on. Today has just not been my day. Okay. one there's two one two so it came with this little pack of screws that I haven't even opened yet but probably should have so we've got little standoffs some other standoffs some more standoffs Itty bitty standoff screws, screws, and more screws, and a couple of these nuts. And what I'm just going to do is put some nuts on the rear to level this guy out. to run these down just real quick make sure that they actually thread on because when you're fighting blind you're just like why isn't this working sometimes it's because they didn't thread them at the factory or it got melted or too hot or well shit where did it go One, it on up through. I really don't like that, that negative terminal there. Just looks like dog shit. Yeah. Yeah, as I was saying, my dog goes apeshit when I fly indoors, but when I fly in the parking garage at work, nobody has anything. So that's probably where I'll be test flying. If it's cold, anyway. Got a pretty nice parking garage. About 10 foot ceilings. All right. Now that looks good. I'm liking that. And then uh, now we need to do the next part. Um, the top part is the VTX here. And we're going to pull this apart as gently as we possibly can. And set this guy down on top of our speed controller. Our ridiculously tiny components. Okay. Good. That's down. We've got that. We want to... Um, connect um, so 
So we've got T2, R2, R2 again, B minus 5 volt ground LED, a 3.3 volt, another T2 pad, and a Well, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, shit. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to bust out the trusty wiring diagram for this one. But you know what? I think I'm going to call it here, actually. I'm going to call it a night and uh, continue this tomorrow um, rather than muck with it anymore and um, get myself to a position where I'm tired and trying to solder and screwing things up. So, yeah. All right. Tomorrow we will continue. Thank you.